Welcome to the begin uh, tutorial number four, and it will be about the autopilot. So uh, let's get right into it and talk about auto throttle. Um, it has three modes: mode one, two, and three. And if I click this button here, it will engage and hold the current speed. It has a minimum speed though of. 297 knots which is 550 kilometers in, and this is called mode 1 so if I put my gears down it will go into mode 2 which means it will hold an angle of attack of 9 to 12 degrees uh, depending on the weight of the aircraft if I click this button here it will hold an an uh, angle of attack uh, for 15.5 degrees and that's called mode free of auto throttle <coughs> uh, the auto throttle will disengage if the right uh, uh, wheel is um, if the right wheel is touched the runway and that is because so that the <coughs> uh, so that the thrust reverses can come into effect so you can use the control arrow up and down to adjust the speed of the autopilot when you are in mode 1 and the autopilot will not engage the afterburner under any circumstances and the uh, loss of AC power for more than 2 seconds will disengage auto throttle if it's on angle of attack mode and it will do the same for speed if you are after six seconds, six seconds. After two seconds, though, in both modes, you will get a master warning. So uh, let's talk about um, the other autopilot. We have three indicators here, and th those are also push buttons. And you see, the first one is lit here, called uh, stick, um, and the tooltip shows dampers active, and that is the lowest mode of the autopilot. And so that's mode one and it means the dampers are active so pitch damper, yaw damper and roll damper um, and if AC power is off for more than 5 seconds uh, that will go out also and uh, with warnings and stuff like that so the next mode of the autopilot is um, is attitude which I will press now and it will meaning it will first of all it will hold the pitch that you're currently at and secondly it will hold the um, the roll angle if you are more rolled more than seven degrees which are where at, at this time and um, if you are rolled less than seven degrees then it will be a heading hold instead so um, if it's more than 66 degrees or gears is down uh, no if it's more than 66 degrees it will not hold anything and if it's uh, if gears is down it's always roll hold and never heading hold it will also not engage if you have a pitch larger than 60 degrees so you can use the control arrows um, for for adjusting the roll, if if you are in roll hold, you can use the control side arrows to adjust how much roll. It will roll with a constant rate when you do that, and then let go, and then it will keep that roll. Um, the roll there's a roll limit on the autopilot, and that is. Um, depending on the speed of the aircraft and if the gears are down and um, it won't roll more than that so if pitch is more than 60 degrees or bank is more than 66 degrees then after 5 seconds uh, the push button will blink uh, and uh, disengage so the control arrows to the side is also uh, your trim <coughs> so but when you have autopilot going they won't uh, trim your they will trim either uh, bank if you are set on roll hold or it will trim heading if you are set on heading hold 
you can see if you are set on heading or bank ro uh, hold now for example if you look in the hot there you will see that we have the heading box and if the heading box is there it's because you have heading hold on not roll hold so when you are in in a mode uh, right now we are in autopilot mode 2 <coughs> If I downgrade it to mode 1, every time you downgrade the autopilot you always get a master warning. So I'll just click that away. A master warning without any indicators showing up by the way. So the third autopilot mode um, gives you instead of a pitch hold it gives you a altitude hold. <coughs> In regards to heading and roll, it works in the same manner as um, as the mode two, the attitude hold. And uh, if you notice on the hot, um, hold on, just um, there is now something called altitude boxes. There they are. You can see there are the top of them is above the horizon now. They work sort of like the altitude lines I talked about in the previous tutorial. But the altitude boxes uh, indicate that there is a heading hold, no, sorry, an altitude hold available um, setting set. So if you go below uh, 1500 f meters, then you will get both altitude lines and altitude boxes. <coughs> So you can see when the altitude boxes here is aligned with the horizon, it means we have reached our destination altitude. And as you can see in the radar, you will also see the altitude boxes. <coughs> so um, if you have a DC power outage, then um, the autopilot uh, decouples and you'll get no warning uh, but if it comes back uh, the DC power within six seconds uh, the altitude the autopilot will re-engage at whatever setting it was before if it's more than six seconds it will just stay off and you have to manually uh, engage it again if you are in uh, mode 3 um, altitude hold and you fly in the transonic regime for more than 60 seconds um, it will disengage uh, that mode and downgrade to mode one, 2 so um, if I have a, a heading um, an altitude that is less than 80% uh, of the altitude, uh, my desired altitude, if I haven't reached that altitude yet, then notice down by the radar, the, the red light there, it will go on, it means um, that I'm below 80% of uh, what uh, the altitude hold is set to. Okay. So, you can use the autopilot menu also in flight gear. Um, if you just go in and mess with the numbers that is already set, you can see here it's at altitude hold and it's at he uh, heading box. If you go in and mess with those numbers, it will just take into effect. But if you start changing uh, whatever its setting is, for example, you change it to a pitch hold. Um, then it will disengage uh, you know on the on the front panel the lamps will disengage and you are now uh, the autopilot uh, menu now controls what's happening everything in the autopilot uh, menu here should work except for flight director and speed with pitch and so you can just uh, do whatever you want here uh, it's not so as much fun as using the cockpit controls I think but you can do it if you want and um, if you um, start messing with the push buttons here on the 
<coughs> on the front panel, then it will of course go back into being controlled by those. So, um, yeah, I just want to mention <coughs> the NAV1 glide slope is not entirely stable right now. Um, <coughs> so a very important feature of the of the autopilot is something called CSS control stick steering. Um, that means that even though if I have autopilot on, I can still use my my stick, my just uh, you know my flight stick. So what I'm gonna do now is I I have a altitude hold on. I'm gonna pull back on the stick. Get it activated, yeah. And you see the autopilot doesn't decouple, and the plane reacts to my command. And as soon as I let go of the stick, it computes whatever new altitude uh, I let go of the stick at, and that's the new altitude hold point. So um, that's an easy way to control the um, autopilot. So same if I have heading hold on, which I have now, I will bank the fly stick to the left until it comes down to 310 degrees heading. And when I let go of the stick, that's going to be on new heading. Same if I have roll hold on, I'm just gonna put it into roll 2, and I'm gonna put a roll hold on, like that. Let it just become stable, yes, okay. So if I have roll hold on and I start moving the stick, it is the roll, uh, the bank angle that I change it. So I change it now in my fly stick and I let go of the stick and it keeps that new bank angle. So the thing is, if you do both at the same time, what I did now was I either adjusted the... I pulled back on the stick as if to control the elevators or, or sideways to control the ailerons. If you do both, it's the plane is going to act a bit strange. Um, when it that's because there's a dead uh, dead band in the center of the stick now, and um, if I cross that dead band, is as soon as I'm out of that dead band as I am now, I'm doing sort of a spiral movement, it's fine. But as soon as I cross that dead band, the autopilot is gonna um, recompute uh, the values, the current values, and if it does that, for example, only for the, the bank, the, uh, the bank, set, the bank hold, the roll hold, and does not do it for the altitude hold or the pitch hold, uh, as I'm in mode one, two now, uh, then uh, you're gonna act, um, probably feel it acts a bit strange. Uh, so you have to get used to it. I recommend when you use CSS system that you only either use elevators, uh, no, either only pull back and forth on the stick or pull it sideways. That way um, it's most uh, intuitive to use that system. So uh, the plane also has something called auto follow. It's not an authentic feature but I'll mention it anyway. And that is that whatever you have selected uh, on your radar, you can select the autopilot to just follow that uh, that plane. So thank you for listening and next tutorial will be about landing.